Hey guys, me Reynolds, Chris Tomer here with this Monday morning mountain weather update. We had a little storm system come through. This was the appetizer snow. Laid down about six inches of new snow up there at Aspen Snowmass. There might have been a little bit more in a couple of spots, but that was a little bit above what I was thinking even. Most places with this first little storm system picked up like two to six inches of accumulation. In fact, skies have already cleared over the top of Loveland. I mean, look at that crystal clear sunrise from the top of the Continental Divide. They picked up about three and a half, maybe four inches up there at Loveland Ski Area. But again, this was just the appetizer, a much bigger storm system with one to two feet of widespread snow at the ski areas for Colorado. And also the Wasatch is on the way. Um, let me just show you what radar looks like out of the Pacific Northwest. So here's our storm system that's going to do it. You can see the rain and the snow moving into California. That's going to target Mammoth. There'll be some additional snow as well at Tahoe, higher up on the mountain, but this is mainly going to target Mammoth. And then that storm system is going to slide across Nevada, set up a basically a, a parallel of snow with jet support across a lot of the Wasatch, high Uintas, and then all zones of Colorado. At times, the northern side might might brush on that northern periphery, the Tetons, but I'm not expecting uh, a lot of snow up in the Tetons out of this. Here's what's remaining in Colorado this morning, the front that came through, and now it's, it's basically all moving away and there's hardly anything left. And like I showed you, skies are clearing. Here's the setup on water vapor. So your moisture aloft is in the whites and the blues, and you can see our storm system right here spinning. So that's bringing in this entire trough, this dip in the jet, and that's what's gonna deliver that snow to the Sierra. Nevada and eventually Utah and Colorado with a lot of jet stream support. So that's what's next on the docket. All right, here are my bullet points this morning. Very simple. Storm system coming. 1125, California, and then 2627, Utah and Colorado. In the Northeast, still a storm system on tap for the 28th and 29th. Maybe not quite as big or it's moving just a little faster, but the numbers are still fairly impressive. Um, I'll have a special map just for the Northeast coming up here in a second. Here are my key dates. Snow timeline for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and Interior, BC. So for the Wasatch, that next batch of heavy snow comes in late today, 25th through the 26th, heavy accumulations. Generally one to two feet or 10 to 20 inches, somewhere in that zone. Um, Tetons, you're going to get some moderate snow on the 26th. Again, you're going to be on the northern side of all of this. Colorado, you've got heavy snow, heavy accumulation coming 1126 into the morning of 1127. So those are the key dates to watch. In fact, you know, let me take you up to Alta. Here's the forecast mediagram for Alta, Snowbird, and this is Alta at about 9,000 feet, but very applicable to Snowbird and for the most part, Solitude and Brighton. And so there's our column for today, the 25th, there's the 26th, there's the 27th, early 28th. So down in the snow column, the forecast puts out about 18 inches of accumulation at Alta at 9,000 feet. So a pretty hefty snowfall on the way, and it's gonna happen pretty fast. Um, so again, about 18 inches there, and Snowbird, probably 15 to 18, maybe 15 to, you know, somewhere in that zone for Solitude Brighton, and then about 10 to 12 uh, up at Park City, I-80, um, a lot of Deer Valley and Snow Basin. So I think that's the way it's gonna play out for a lot of the Wasatch. You can see the temps during the snowfall Max out at about 29 degrees. It's a little bit on the warm side, but 29 will do. Um, and the winds are going to gust to about 40 miles an hour during the course of this event. And then the temps fall um, into the uh, around 10 degrees by Wednesday night and Thursday morning. So it does turn colder after this. Okay, let me take you to um, Colorado. Time height forecast. This is for Arapahoe Basin in Colorado. Uh, and you're looking at humidity, a forecast for humidity in the atmosphere. All the vertical layers, that's what you're looking at, a slice. Timeline's at the bottom, read it from right to left. And you can see the wall of moisture coming, the wall of humidity with our storm system. Basically, you know, 26th into early 27, that's when we're gonna pick up our, our, the bulk of the snow there at Arapahoe Basin. Um, and you've got lift, a lot of lift through all the layers. So we'll be transporting this up and, and this is gonna be a, a pretty good snow for Colorado and also the Wasatch. But here are a couple of specifics. So here is Arapahoe Basin off the same model, um, thinking about 20 inches up there. So this is what I talked about last night, 15 to 20 inches I think is a, is a good range for A Basin, Loveland, Keystone, Winter Park, maybe a little bit less than Keystone, maybe closer to a foot, but uh, Winter Park all the way up to Eldora, 
uh, 15 to 20 through Summit County, Copper Mountain, Vail. Um, let me take you a little bit west. You know, I showed you Irwin out in western, in the West Elks yesterday. So this is about 10 miles outside of Crested Butte in one of the snowiest spots in Colorado. Yesterday, the forecast from this model was at about 50 inches. It's brought it down a little bit. Now we're looking at about three feet. It's about 36 to 40 inches, somewhere in that zone. So that's what we're looking at in Irwin. And that's going to be a big snow. I've been... My thinking is that most places in, in all the mountain zones of Colorado, except for the sand grays, are going to see one to two feet of total accumulation with localized pockets of three feet, and I think Irwin is a good example of that. Um, snow mass on the other side um, of the, uh, the West Oaks, thinking about 20 inches, and this actually has about 22 um, inches, roughly 21, 22. So snow mass, you've got a big snow coming. And again, this happens on the 26th into the early morning hours of the 27th. So that's going to be a big one for the West Elks. All right, here's the, uh, the jet stream forecast, close of business today. You can see the jet stream starting to elongate from west east, getting ready to shuttle in all that moisture with this storm system. A pretty uh, nice, well-defined runway for this. Now the 26th, things really are kicking here on the 26th through a lot of the Wasatch. Um, heavy snow accumulation, the high Uintas. Again, you're on the northern periphery in the Tetons with moderate accumulation. But things starting to stack up in Colorado, and that continues into the 27th in Colorado, and then that moves away. And then we're into a pattern where there's just there's more high pressure ridging, and you can kind of see the jet bending to the north or arcing, uh, and that's that high pressure ridge off the west coast. So that'll run us into early December after all this happens. All right, so the forecast radar and the satellite, by 5.30 this afternoon, um, that's the picture. You've got precip or snow starting to stream in to parts of Utah, but it's very light at the onset. It picks up late tonight and pretty much all day tomorrow will snow heavily, but snow back in the Sierra at this point. So there's Tuesday morning, heavy snow through the Wasatch, high Uintas, a lot of Colorado in on the action. Continues in all those same places, afternoon 26. The 27th, things really start to transition down into Colorado in the morning and then by the afternoon the storm is moving away and that's pretty much it and then you can see as this uh, animation rolls on there's not a lot else in this forecast through early uh, December here's the first here's the second everything's sort of streaming up into parts of uh, British Columbia you can see some of the snow up there in the northern tier but that's all the way through 12-4 so my latest numbers I went ahead and adjusted this and I did it for all of today through tomorrow and the 27th so basically the next couple days, because I next two, two and a half um, days, I wanted you to see exactly what's going to happen through this entire storm system. So this is roughly a 48 hour to 72 hour forecast, somewhere in that time frame. Um, looking at one to two feet for the Wasatch, one to two feet for most of Colorado, but pockets of three feet, pockets of three feet. And I showed you one of those around Irwin. I mean, you can see the numbers and I'll, I'll zoom in on some of these here in a second. Um, Less snow down in northern New Mexico, less snow in the San Gurdas Cristos. About two, two and a half feet from Mammoth as this thing pulls away. And there's still some good moisture for Tahoe, but it's going to be high up. And the storm's really going to be departing as all this happens. So you got to be, you know, higher on the mountain to really get this. Um, and then just light numbers uh, up in the parts of Idaho, Montana, B.C., parts of the Pacific Northwest. You know, anywhere from probably 6 to 10 for the Tetons. Again, you're on the northern periphery of this. And again, this is uh, all of today through the 27th. Here's the final period, and just like that, you flip a switch and it's bone dry uh, across most of the lower 48. Everything shifts up into parts of British Columbia where we could see, you know, some light to moderate accumulations, especially in the northern uh, latitudes of B.C. You could see better snow up there. Um, let me zoom into Colorado. Um, so this is the I-70 corridor, Summit County, Vail, Front Range High Peaks. Again, 1125 all of today through the 27th, looking at 1 to 2 feet for most places. Uh, Buff Pass gets close to 2 feet, we'll call it 20. Most places are in that 20, 10 to 20 inch range through Summit County, Breckenridge, Keystone, A Basin, Loveland. Um, like I said, uh, you know, near 20, 15 to 20 up there at A Basin, Loveland, Winter Park. So good numbers. Vail gets about 16. West Elks are in that, probably that 20 inch range, um, more as you go to the west side of the, of the Elk Range. 
Let's go to the northeast. Still a big storm system on tap for 2829. Um, looking at about a foot. So the numbers have come down a little bit. About a foot through a lot of Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine at the major ski areas. Uh, white face. Snow Ridge still benefiting from what looks to be a lot of um, a lot of lake effect between like the 29th and early early December. So that's what really takes you over the edge and puts you at 26. But everybody else, I mean, unless you're in Massachusetts and you know, those, those numbers are going to be smaller, but about a foot with the storm system. So it's exactly what the Northeast needs is some good snow. All right, guys, we're going to end on the, uh, the big map here for the West. Again, all of today through the 27th. You can see the targeted areas around Mammoth, the Wasatch, and pretty much all the zones of Colorado. Take care and I appreciate you tuning in here. Have a great day.